Hey everyone, it is Tanya. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another speed build. Today, I'm very excited to share a build that I've had written down on my to-do list for a very long time that was actually a suggestion from one of you, which was to build a house based on one of the kit home designs from the Sears catalog. So this is a Sears modern home. I am basing this off a very specific uh, design a very specific floor plan, which I will link down below, which is a modern home number 264B240, which is from the 1916 Sears Roebuck Modern Homes catalog. Uh, this home does have four bedrooms, one bathroom, and a sleeping porch. And I thought it was just a really cute one, to be honest. I thought it was a fun idea to base this off of a kit home and try to recreate that in The Sims. And, you know, it's actually a very small space. There are four bedrooms, but they're all really small and obviously only one bathroom. So for The Sims, that's going to be a little bit difficult to work with. Uh, but if you're not familiar with kit homes, they were basically mail order homes where <laughs> a bunch of these were created in North America, I believe uh, there was about 70,000 of them sold between 1908 and 1942. So if you have heard about these or you know somebody that has one, maybe you live in one yourself, do let me know. I think it's very interesting, uh, the concept of these homes. And obviously it reminds me of like current prefab homes. Uh, but creating these in The Sims, I think is such a fun idea. I've done this one so far, obviously, but definitely let me know if you'd like to see more of them. There are so many different designs and floor plans for these, uh, and I'd be very interested to try and create another one because recreating real life homes in The Sims is very difficult, but it's so rewarding and like fun. Uh, you have this great sense of accomplishment after you actually get it done. There were a couple of things I had to tweak ever so slightly to make them work in The Sims, like the floor plan was a little wonky in a couple of places, but for the most part, I kept to the floor plan and I'm pretty proud of that. Uh, one of those things is actually this chimney on the outside. It is like the, the, the chimney stack is centered and then there's this little roof piece on either side, but it would have been too big if I made it three tiles across. It would have made more sense if I could have like a half tile chimney in the middle, if that makes sense. Uh, but of course, The Sims, we're on a grid system, so I did the best I could. Also, it's a black and white image, so I decided on the colors based on what I just thought looked nicest. So this ends up being a red house, which I think is so striking. I really liked the environment I built it into. I am on the pier area in Copperdale, which is the world that comes with The Sims 4 high school years. And I just feel like it fits in this environment really well, although it is a craftsman style home. So I do feel like it would also fit really nicely in the new world we're getting with Growing Together, which is called San Sequoia. So uh, you could probably place it there too if you get this build after that pack comes out. Uh, and actually, I noticed while I was building this, the columns that are used in the pictures of this house are actually the columns we're getting with that pack. But we didn't have those, obviously, so I decided to scale up these items from Debug and place them in some half walls to kind of get a similar idea. There was also a pergola out front in the porch area, so I tried to combine that on the front porch, and I think it looks so cute. We also end up having a side yard over here, as that's where it showed that we had a staircase. So I have a little bit of a yard, not too much, and I rotate this lot <laughs> quite a few times because obviously this is the front of the lot, but this house is more narrow. So I'm pretty sure I rotate it so it's not actually facing the correct way. So if you do grab this from the gallery, it will be facing sideways. I just think it makes way more sense on this lot. So you'll be seeing the side of the lot on the gallery image, if that makes sense. But if you'd like to download it and play with it for yourself, it is up there right now. You can find it under my EA ID, which is Griffey, G-R-Y-P-H-I. You could also find it under the hashtag Miss Griffey, and that information will also be in the description down below as well. Uh, but right now, I am trying to figure out the color of it. It does turn red in the end, but I tried some beiges and some greens. I really wasn't sure what color I wanted this house to be, but I am so happy I ended up turning it red in the end. It just feels like it was right, and I don't build red houses very often, so it was definitely refreshing as well. I do forget that front piece of the roof over the stairs for a little while, but it, it's 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 colored now. I, I figured it out. Um, 
Anyway, the house has been rotated now and we're working on some landscaping. I tried to get some trees that looked like they would be in this area. Uh, not all of them are ones that I see off in the distance, but ones that I just felt like fit this spot pretty well. And uh, the landscaping is a little bit overgrown because that's kind of what I'm seeing in this area. We have lots of random bushes and rocks around here. I love that the background is the pier with the Ferris wheel. I just think it is so fun. So uh, I thought this was a really nice lot. This is normally a rental lot and I did have some issues while I was trying to upload this to the gallery and take screenshots and stuff where even though I set it to residential, it kept reverting back to rental. Uh, I got it figured out in the end, but I don't know why it kept doing that. So <laughs> I apologize if for some reason you have that issue as well. I'm not really sure what causes that, but I just thought I would mention it in case you also encounter that issue. But anyway, right now I am just getting a little pathway to the front of the house and also having it lead around to the back where I'm going to have a little bit of a backyard. I thought that these rocks made the most sense here. Uh, obviously, the lot does not line up to a road, so it looks a little odd no matter what. Uh, but I did the best I could, and I love these rocks from Base Game. I really wish we had more of them. They're in show live at objects, but there's only three of them. So trying to place them in a way that looks organic and like you're not just placing the same three rocks over and over is really difficult. It'd be cool if they went back and added more of those or revisited the idea in a future pack so that there'd be more of them in debug. I would love that. Uh, let me know if you use those rocks a lot, if that's something you would enjoy. It's always like fun to talk about the ideas of what we'd like to see in the game, even for simple things like that. And also like bigger things like expansion packs. I'm so excited for growing together. It's actually coming out so soon now. We're almost at the end of February and it comes out like what, mid-March? So we are so close. We're going to have infants and San Sequoia and all of the gameplay associated with that pack, which uh, we've really only seen like the a little bit of like what family dynamics and like relatives coming to visit but there has to be more than that i am so excited to hear more about the pack and get my hands on it i just i love 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 family gameplay and this is essentially us getting generations in the sims 4 so i'm pretty pumped about it anyway this is the kitchen i'm following the floor plan so based on where everything was located is how i figured this out uh, so it's a bit of a scrunched kitchen. We'll go in there and figure it out here shortly. Uh, the one thing that I took creative liberties with in this room was I added additional counters on the side where the archway is uh, because it just felt too small. And I really wanted to make sure we had enough space for like a fridge. Uh, so I did add that in here, but I didn't extend the size of the kitchen or anything. I just added additional like cabinetry. So I thought that that was fine, but just figuring out where the sink and the stove are going to go. And also I picked fixtures and stuff in here based on the idea that perhaps this room was renovated maybe in the 50s. It hasn't been touched in a long time when it comes to at least built-in fixtures. And so the house is like a little bit dated, but I really liked that. I think it's fun for gameplay. There weren't any pictures of like how this house would be furnished really. It just had a general floor plan. So I had fun with it and I didn't overly clutter it. I wanted it to stay pretty minimal so you could kind of imagine whatever family you wanted to have here. Uh, so this is not a super cluttered build by any means. I know a lot of my builds are, but uh, this one isn't. The four bedrooms do have personality to them. They're just not super detailed, if that makes sense. Uh, but I do get a couple of clutter pieces throughout. So in the kitchen, we have a bread box. We have a nice little pot on the stove, some cookies in the corner, things like that. Uh, I think it looks so, so cute. I was quite happy with it. I love the shape of this kitchen. Oh, and the other thing I changed is the archway into the kitchen is here instead of in the hallway. I did that. I believe that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I made a couple of little changes there because the floor plan was a little bit weird and would have made the downstairs bedroom, one of them, like way too small. So I moved the wall over a little bit and it made the placement of where I wanted like the archways and the doors be a little bit wonky. <laughs> so it's slightly different. But anyway, we're popping back outside now first to finish up some landscaping out back, get a couple of activities. So we just have a picnic table, a barbecue, a laundry line, and the wash bucket. I'm just realizing I'm pretty sure I forgot to add a hamper inside. So uh, you'll probably want to grab that and place that in this house if you want to play with the laundry or just delete those items if you don't want to play with laundry because I know that's a lot sometimes. Uh, but this is pretty much it for the back area. I kept it pretty simple. 
I just wanted a couple of things for your Sims to do out here. And then we're heading inside to work on the dining room, which originally was supposed to be slightly longer than this. And then the bedroom would have been bigger. So this is how I decided to figure that out. Uh, they're actually the same size, but I think it works out nicely. You're able to fit a table with six chairs in here anyway. Uh, it is a little scrunched, so I didn't do too much decorating in here. Mostly just have a couple of paintings on the wall and an open box of cereal on the table. That felt realistic for a large household. And then I just got some plates over here in the corner as well as a plant. And that should be pretty much it for the dining room. And I believe we move into the living room next. In here, I opted for these more modern sofas from the Desert Luxe kit. I just thought that they looked really nice in this space. And like I said, the house is kind of a mixture of styles. I wanted it to feel more realistic and more lived in in that way. So I was quite happy with that. And I love the fireplace over here. It actually lines up with the chimney. I made sure to do that uh, since I was following an actual floor plan that wasn't too difficult to do. And we have a big TV up on the fireplace. I do change out those curtains to be the same mint ones I have in the other rooms in a little while. But at first I have this green in here. It just felt like it didn't quite match with the rest of the house. So I will be changing that. And I love the chessboard that I put on the table that is from the clutter kit and I feel like I use it a lot because it's just such realistic table clutter like coffee table clutter I wish we had more stuff like that but I have no idea what packs we would get that in because we obviously got a whole clutter kit uh but I'm excited to see what clutter items we get with the next expansion pack that should be quite interesting but anyway over here by the entryway I just have a little table place to throw your shoes a little chair you probably sit in to you know put your shoes on and take them off I also got this little table next to the couch I believe I put a lamp here and then just this painting above it pretty simple I just needed a couple more decorations in that space but now we're moving on to the only bathroom in this entire house uh, just using a base game tub sink and toilets it's very basic in here but i felt like that's kind of what this house would have i was trying to get simple fixtures and all of that sort of thing uh kind of matching what i had in the kitchen uh, so it's nothing too interesting and i know this year i was trying to focus on creating better bathrooms but the size of this one is the same size i always create and i was basing it off of a real floor plan so it's not an exciting bathroom but hopefully some future ones will be uh, if you haven't been following my YouTube shorts, I have been trying to build better bathrooms this year. It's been a really fun time. But anyway, this is the primary bedroom. It's like a peachy color. I thought that this was really pretty. It's not one I use too often, but I do love this bedspread from Cats and Dogs. So I was happy to use it in this space. I just get a little mirror over here. And then there was this closet space. So I decided to actually put a closet in this bedroom. Uh, that's not something I normally do. I feel like I don't usually add closets that are separate rooms or that kind of thing off of a floor plan so it was interesting to do that you could also delete the archway there and use one of the walk-in closets from get together there is a four tile one that would fit really nicely in that spot as well and then I took forever picking out a painting to put in this space uh, but I just used some of the modular pieces from dream home decorator to build a closet in here which I thought looked quite nice I don't know why I didn't use a get together one I feel like that would have made more sense but it's fine. I got to decorate a closet. I'm not mad about that. Um, I, I like that we have these pieces now with a couple of different packs. First with Dream Home Decorator and then High School Years added some as well. So just got some shoes in there. I also have a Seasons Decoration box because that just feels like a closet item and a little chair. And then this bedroom down here I was thinking was a teenager. It's very blue and red. I think it came out pretty cute. It obviously doesn't really match the color scheme of the rest of the house, but I feel like that's okay for like kids and teens bedrooms. Uh, they're not really trying to make their space cohesive with the house decoration. They just want it to be their own space. So I was heavily handed on the color scheme in here and their liking of sports. I also add like a space poster and that's pretty much it for this room. Just getting some bedside tables. Like I said, I kept the decorations fairly minimal. This does have some personality, but... I didn't want to overly clutter it, especially because it's such a small space, but heading upstairs, this is the space that's supposed to be the sleeping porch. I just made it like a little outdoor porch and we have a yoga mat out there, so it's really simple. And then upstairs, there are these two bedrooms and then in the front, there's an alcove that's labeled as an alcove. And so I got to decide what I wanted that space to be. So I put a, uh, like a door from each bedroom into that alcove. And I was thinking it was probably some sort of closet at some point, but it's sort of a mini playroom that these two bedrooms share. I thought that that was so cute. 
you could probably convert that into another bathroom as well, like a Jack and Jill bathroom. I could see that being an adorable way to use that space and a very useful one since there's only one bathroom in this whole house right now. But I wanted to keep it not being a bathroom because it wasn't labeled as a bathroom. So it ends up being a playroom. Uh, but these two bedrooms are coming together now. They're like very blue, pink, and purple. This one has like butterflies and stuff all over it. I thought it was really cute. I really enjoyed the decorations in these rooms. Uh, we got a couple of toys in the actual bedroom, but the bigger items are in this alcove. Uh, so we have the playhouse from Dream Home Decorator and the puppet show from the kids room stuff pack and like some stuff hanging on the walls as well. They hung up some of their favorite pictures and like a little calendar. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this build. I had so much fun recreating this from this year's catalog. Make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you'd like to see more, and click that bell to be notified when I upload. Thank you so very much for watching. Enjoy the screenshots, and I will see y'all soon. Bye, everyone.